first thing, first thing, two holidays. We miss two classes. They are all on Monday. Next Monday, June twentieth, July fourth. We will lose two classes. That's huge, because that's one week time, lecture time, one week. Yeah, yeah. But I try to get that time back in some way, in some special way. Yeah, definitely, you won't come to the classroom in those two days. Yeah, but I plan to do something through videos. Actually, that's the normal work we need to do for this class in those two days. So try to get use part of the time we lose. Yeah. So my idea is. First one, next Monday. I start our programming project number one. Programming project number one. We have two programming projects, so I use video to give you instructions for project number one. Right? Yeah. But that's just the one hour, a little more than one hour time. So. We have more than two hours, so the second hour, I will do some exercise questions. I will give you examples of exercise questions to help you to do the homework, homework, homework example examples for homework. So in that way, we can get part of the time back, not the classroom lecture time. But video study time、yeah, for the necessary work in this class.、Yeah. So in that way, I try to get thing get the first missing day back. Second missing day, July fourth. Yeah. Although you need to, you have a lot of activities in the holiday. But after that, we need to prepare for our midterm test. Midterm test. Yeah. So I will do a review session for the midterm test. A、yeah. lot of examples preparing you for the midterm test using second missing day. How about that?、Yeah. So that's my plan. Try to get the time back a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, that's. Too much for the short semester. We lose the whole week, total eight weeks. Eight weeks. We need to use one week to do two tests: midterm test, final. One week for the tests. Then we miss another week for holidays. That's too much, right? So eight weeks. We only have six weeks left. So I need to get something back. All right. So that's the first thing.、Uh, second thing, I for our lecture time,、yeah. I try to manage our lecture time a little bit. All right. Yeah. You can see it. All right. Yeah. Let me just use change a different color. All right, yeah, this color. All right. Yeah, for the lecture time, you can see we have 150 minutes, right? Official, two and a half hour, 150 minutes. Yeah. And、uh, think about if we go from beginning to end, everyone. Will be very tired, right? Including myself. So we need to take a break in the middle. Okay. Yeah. In order to, you know,、uh, make us in the best condition, attention, the focus. So I may like to、uh, use this two 
two and a half hour in this way. All right. Suppose this is two and a half hour. Yeah. All right. The first half. The first half, I want to use approximately eighty minutes for the first half. Yeah, because the first half, usually, we have fresh mind, so we are in good condition, so we do a little more. Okay. Yeah, because the second hour we will be very, you know, relatively more tired, right? Yeah, so the second one, a little shorter. Yeah. All right. So the first one, 80 minutes. Okay. Then, 10 minutes for break. In the middle, 10 minutes, that's the break time. Yeah. Yeah, because when we start, that's at 1 p.m. All right. So the first period, 2 20 p.m. 80 minutes. So we we take a break at 2:20. 10 minutes break. So you come back. We start our second period half 2:30. Then one hour. So the second period, 60 minutes, one hour after the break. Oh, sorry. How about that? Yeah. Try to get ourselves in the best condition in the lecture. Okay? Yeah. And in the lecture, second period, yeah. Because thinking about usually we are relatively, you know, tired. Uh, so I tried to do some interactive activities, question and answer and uh, comprehension questions. So ask you questions, so you give me answers, you know, that kind of activity, you know, interactive way. Yeah, make sure so we do not fall asleep. Yeah, in the second hour. First hour, we don't worry, right? First hour, it should be fine. So the second hour, I need to do something special to Get, get your attention, get your attention. How about that? That's my plan. <laughs> yeah, because for this summer, we need to do something special. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that's my plan. So if you have any idea, just let me know. Yeah, because for myself, a lot of things I do experiments. Yeah, for this class, I try to do a lot of things doing experiments. So this kind of thing also doing experiments, okay? <laughs> All right, so that's the first one. Uh, I need to look at the time. That, yeah, the remaining. So I, from now on, I think I can go a little fast. Yeah, because I already used a lot of time. Yeah, let me just do a little fast. First, homework assignments. Two assignments. Two, you know, paper type. Okay, assignments. Full scale paper type paper type assignments. Each assignment I will give you twenty-five questions. Okay, twenty-five questions. Yeah. So usually there are several types. Yeah. So one type, true true and false type. Multiple choice type. Short answer type. Last one. Other than these three types, last one also very important. Full solutions. Yeah, full solution. You need to write all the details of your solutions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Typically, these four types. Yeah. Yeah. 
So usually, I give you a little more than one week to complete it. Okay, approximately nine to ten days to complete it. Nine to ten days to complete. Yeah. So plenty of time because you need to study and many questions, very challenging. You can ask me questions. Ask me questions. So definitely I cannot give you an answer, but I will help you understand the concepts. I can give you instructions to go the right direction or some hints. That's I can well, what I can do. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing I plan to do this semester, I also do the experiment, doing the discussion board. Run discussion board. Okay, yeah. So I can post questions. Yeah, usually based on my experience before, uh, most students do not use the discussion board. So, yeah, most students, they never ask questions through the discussion board. Yeah. Yeah. If you ask, I will answer, you know, I will, so I can do, I can use a lot of ways to answer, you know. But uh, if you, yeah, I hope you use that discussion board. If you have any doubt, yeah. So sometimes students send me emails asking questions. Yeah, probably you like that way. Yeah. In that situation, probably I may move your questions to the discussion board. I, I just, uh, you know, reformulate or, you know, use a different way to write it. Yeah. I do not show your name, but I just say, you know, there is such a question in this class. The purpose is for other students to study, to study, okay? So I answer one question once, so everyone can see it. Everyone can study it, yeah, so. So that's the, you know, discussion board, the purpose of discussion board, yeah. I try to manage it efficiently, yeah. So this is still, uh, you know, the first time I do experiment, so I cannot predict how good it is, yeah, but let, let's just try it, okay? For you, at least you know there is some place you can ask your questions and get answered. And I try to organize, so based on the modules, topics, you know, the questions. Yeah, yeah. all right, so that's the homework assignment. Second, quizzes. Another important, yeah, because we only have two homework assignments. That's a relatively small number, right? Yeah. Two tests, two homework assignments, yeah. So we need a, a little more practice time, yeah. Here I use the quizzes part of the practice time, yeah. So here you can see uh, we use four of the six quizzes, yeah. In that way, you can drop to lowest scores, you know, yeah, so help you get a little better, yeah. And uh, among those four quizzes, oh, yeah, total six quizzes. So here, let's look at total six quizzes. All right. Four of them, four online. Online, yeah. Online, each quiz, I'll give you one week. The goal is have you study. Yeah, so you can use all the materials, you know, ask questions, you know. The main purpose, study. Yeah, study. And each one, 20, uh, 10 questions, 10 questions. Okay, all right. Usually comprehension questions. Comprehension questions. 
It's another, you know, computation questions. You need to write many formulas. No, because I use the quiz tool in Canvas. Quiz tool. That's the automatic grading. Automatic grading. I cannot enter complicated formulas because it's very hard for the grading tool to process your formulas. So you can only process simple text. Simple text. Okay. Yeah. So that's mainly we use it for comprehension questions. Yeah. Then two of them. Classroom. Doing here, okay? Yeah, classroom. Yeah. yeah. So I pass the paper, the sheet. You know, yeah, not long. Yeah, not long. You know, reasonable. Yeah. So the last probably last ten twenty minutes. Give you last twenty minutes. So you you know, complete it. Yeah, so so that's my plan. Yeah, for the quizzes. Yeah. Next, programming projects. Yeah. In our module one, we have a excellent topic. We can do a programming project. So that's why next Monday, because we will finish our module one this week. Today, Wednesday, we will complete our module one. After that, I can assign you the first programming project. Yeah. So you can using your personal experience to feel the power of algorithms. How powerful a good algorithm has. So that's very important. Yeah. So that's our first project. So then, then. Due to the Time limit. Time limit. Uh, usually, one project I give you four weeks to complete. Four weeks to complete. So each project for four weeks. Oh. Four weeks to complete. Yeah, plenty of time. Yeah. But you can see the limited time we have the semester. Our second project we have to start a little earlier in parallel with the first project. Before the first project due, we have to assign the second one. Otherwise, we won't have time before the final. All right. So remember that July fourth week we will lose one one class. So probably at that week. I can assign your second project. Yeah, actually that week already late. Yeah, because yeah, oh July fourth. Yeah, yeah probably the right. Yeah, because our final August third, July fourth, approximately one month. Yeah, probably that that week, we have to get out our second project, programming project. Yeah. All right. <coughs> uh, Tests. Yeah. So I put the dates. Okay, midterm, July thirteenth. Yeah. Yeah. After July fourth, review, do preparation. Then, July thirteenth, Wednesday, two and a half hour. You sit here. You know, do the traditional style, paper style. And uh, for the tests, the question types, style question types, same as homework. Style, all right. So I do not repeat. The same as homework. Style, okay. Yeah. True and false, multiple questions, short answer, full solution. Yeah, full solution. Yeah, I, but I will give you small number. Yeah. Two questions, full solution. Okay, small number. Yeah, yeah. But the total still, yeah, homework style. That means total twenty-five questions. Yeah. 
That's not easy, right? Think about it. in two and a half hour, you need to finish that 25 questions. All the many questions, pretty easy. True and false, yeah? yes, no, right? Yeah. Short answer, you know, yeah. And uh, usually all the questions, you already, you, you have practiced many examples, okay? So now you do the similar questions Although I changed the format a little bit, yeah. I like to change the format slightly, yeah. So then you, you still, you should be able to do it. Do those, it looks similar, but you need to, because I need to check your understanding. I don't want you just copy the old answers. Right? That's not good. I really, I emphasize understanding. Yeah. You're based on the logic, not based on your memory. Yeah. Yeah. That's not good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so that's uh, two tests. Yeah. Yeah, what else? Yeah. I think I pretty much covered uh, Main items. Any questions? Oh, yeah. What language are the programming projects going to be in? All right, good. Yeah. Usually I s accept three languages Java, C, Python. So my students usually send me these three most popular languages Python. Yeah. So many students use Python these days. Yeah. So I, I accept it. So, yeah, but, but among the three, I pick Java as the main language. So what's the meaning of that? Because if I give you examples, I give you Java examples. Sometimes the program, I need to give you examples showing you some special features. So I need this special features. Yeah. So to show you how to do this feature, I post a Java program. <laughs> So I do not post, you know, C++, Python, you know. Yeah, so I, I use the, so let's say in this way, the default programming language is Java, all right? But C++, Python, all acceptable. Yeah, all acceptable, yeah. All right, so any other questions? Yeah. All right, so yeah, I think I complete the syllabus part. Although there are still some details, yeah, but I don't want to use too much time already. We used 40 minutes, including the setup, you know, a lot of preparation time. Yeah. Yeah. So I I will move on to the our official content. Yeah. Standard content. Okay? All right. Now, our first topic, factors in problem solving. First, we want to understand algorithms. The whole semester, we study algorithms, but we need to really understand what's the meaning and what is the important factors for the algorithms. Yeah. We need to do a lot of difficult work, but if you do not have good understanding, it will be very hard. Yeah. So this first one, as an introduction part, I tried to bring up the most important factors. All right, so let's start. First, yeah, simple question. Why do we need to study algorithms? Yeah. So in the real world, think about this. You will be the computer professionals. So here you get the training to be a computer professionals. What is the main job for a computer professional? You need to solve computing problems in the real world. Real world computing problems. Okay? So many problems could be very difficult. So you, 
get a training, learning the skills, you know, try to prepare you for the real world computing problems. Okay, so that's the general description. Yeah. Then, yeah. how can we do well solving computing problems? What do we need? What kind of preparation do we need? Yeah. First, you need a knowledge skills. At least you need to have sufficient knowledge learned concepts and skills, skills using the knowledge you learned. All right? Yeah. To be smart in solving problems. Even you have the knowledge and you learn how to solve, how to use the knowledge, how to apply some theory to solve the problems, still it does not mean you can solve many challenging problems easily. To be smart, so what do you mean? To be smart, to be creative. Yeah, here, the smart, so I try to describe it. So I like to use the word creative, okay, creative. So creative, so something, some knowledge, when you use, you use it in a creative way. Creative way, not a, you know, duplicate way. If you just duplicate that, some technique, that's not creative, right? Yeah, someone used it before, yeah, you can use it to solve problems, but many times, you cannot just use the old technique directly, right? In a real world situation, you need to modify, modify the existing techniques. Modify in a right way, we call creative, right? Modify it in a right way, then to get a new problem solved, we call creative, okay? If, if you can only just apply the old techniques the same way when they are used you cannot modify you cannot do any modification that means you are not creative not smart how about that description okay yeah, fair description yeah so for this class i really want want you to be creative, yeah. open your mind, yeah. you master many principles, yeah, so principles, but when you use them, you can use various smart ways, yeah, various smart ways to solve the challenging problems, yeah. so that's something I want to emphasize in this class. Okay. Yeah. I will show you many examples, okay? and I will give you strategies, techniques, you know, thinking. In this situation, how do we think? Thinking way. Yeah. Yeah. Try to teach you those things, yeah. and I hope you can understand and use them solving difficult problems. So that's something we need to do for this class. Okay, all right. All right, the so typical situation for a computer professional, yeah. we are a problem solver. We solve real world computing problems. We are problem solver. Okay. So next, we need to look at a particular real world computing problem. Okay. Yeah. And let's assume some problem is not easy. Yeah. We have plenty of difficult problems to solve in the real world. Right? So here I want to look at the factors that can help you solve difficult problems. All right, so, what is, so here we, we look at the high level. Okay? Here we look at the high level. Abstract, high level. Yeah. At this point, we do not look at specific problems. Yeah. At the abstract level. Yeah. All right. First, 
Let me use two examples. Chess example and the football game. Two examples. Yeah. yeah. So we use our experience in the real life to help us understand computing problems. Yeah. We have experience. Okay? Real world. Yeah. First, can we treat those two examples as special cases for computing problems? Yeah, here we're talking about computing problems. Right? First, for chess, definitely. We can treat it, characterize it as a computing problem, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because you need to do a lot of sophisticated critical thinking, right? Thinking in your mind. Yeah. That's computing, right? Yeah. But for a football game, yeah, we can treat it as a general computing problem, right? Yeah, still a lot of thinking, right? A lot of plan, planning, right? Yeah, some strategies very complicated, right? So, in that way, so that means we need to use our brains a lot in planning. When you use your brain a lot, is that computing? We do computing in our mind. In our brain, that's computing, right? Human, yeah, we do computing in our head, okay? Yeah, so we can characterize that as a general computing problem, okay? So now for the general computing problem, then the first key fact we need to have, can you imagine a little bit? So what kind of thing you need to, uh, so here we are talking about all computing problems, what kind of factor you feel very important in order to solve them? Think about that using these two examples. Can you imagine something very important? What the rules of the game are? Yeah, rules, yeah, because rules standard, right? Everyone must follow the same rules. Yeah, if it's standard, yeah, although, so that just the set of environment for the game, right? Yeah, so we know it's important, but here we talk about different things. Yeah. The standard is fixed, right? It's fixed, nobody can change, yeah, although, you know, yeah. So fixed, here we look at the something that can change, people use that factor to solve the problems effectively. Something people need to use, use that kind of factor to solve the problem effectively. Try to imagine, you know. Here, let me give you, yeah. Still, these two examples, strategies. How about that? Do you need strategies, right? So if you, if you like to play chess, in different situations, do you need to apply some special strategies, right? That's important, right? Yeah, in this situation, I need to, you know, move some pieces based on some strategy. Football game. Is the strategy important under some special situation? Right? The strategy is extremely important. Therefore, our algorithms, real-world computing problems based on algorithm, strategy is very important. All right? Yeah. So the first factor, strategies, very important. So in this class, we will learn several commonly used strategies helping us solve various computing problems, algorithms, problems. Hey, yeah, strategies. After the strategy, there is another important factor. Different from strategy, yeah, another factor also extremely important. We still, we use these two examples, real world examples. So we want to look at another important factor. So look at this situation in the football game, typical football game. Yeah. So here, I give you the picture in the final stage the game near the end, the last minute, 
and the game result is determined by a field goal. A field goal. Yeah. I have experience watching those games, last minute field goal. Yeah. Exciting, right? Yeah. So the result is determined by that kicker. Do or die. Make it, then win the game. Otherwise, lose the game. Right? So think about that situation. Yeah. Exciting moment, that situation. Which factor is another important factor other than the strategy? Definitely, it's not a strategy issue, right? The last minute, right? Last minute. So there is another strategy, also very important, right? That in that situation, the kicker, yeah, just make it. Okay. Execution. How about that? You, you know your goal. Yeah, that simple. Just kick it. You know your goal, but you need to make it, right? That's execution factor. Okay? So here, for our algorithms problem, in order to solve effectively, we need to focus on these two factors. So in the remaining of the semester, when I give you examples, I will work on these two aspects. Okay? Strategies, we will learn a lot of strategies. But other than that, if you only have strategies, you, you may not be able to solve those problems. Because you don't know how to execute those strategies, right? Think about, if you know the right strategy, does it mean you can solve it effectively? Not necessary. You don't know the execution part. You don't know how to implement your strategy. Think about that. You don't know that. Okay? Yeah. So here, uh, at this point, I may like to, I may like to use your, our real world experience to describe the relationship between these two factors. Relationship, yeah. Okay. Strategy. So that tells us what direction to go. Yeah, we want to solve that problem. Yeah, so we want to find the right way to solve it. Direction. Direction. So high level, general direction. All right, yeah. It's like when you travel to a new place. First, you need to know the direction, right? Approximately, you know, some direction. You want to move to the right direction first. Second thing, even you know the direction, how to make it, how to follow the right direction to get there. Still another issue, right? Execution. So in the second part, you need to fix a lot of details. In the strategy level, you don't need a lot of details, right? You don't need a lot of details. But in the execution stage, you need a lot of details. Okay? Yeah. So you still, you need to do a lot of work. Difficult work. Yeah. Yeah. So when you do the preparation, we really need to practice, get a lot of experience in these two aspects. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's move to the, uh, you know, the algorithm. Yeah. Now, based on that, then we need to get an algorithm, step-by-step -step procedure to do these two things. Yeah. Follow strategy, putting in all the details for the execution, get the problem solved. That's our algorithm. Okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Then, to understand algorithm better, we may like to from another angle. So here, let me dis describe algorithm from another different angle. Yeah. All right. 
So here, uh, so let's look at it from a programmer's point of view. So now we need to write a program to solve a real-world problem. Yeah. All right, so there, the standard procedure we use. Yeah. Yeah. So for a project, sometimes for a relatively difficult project, in order to organize the complicated procedure in a well-organized way, we may need to draw a diagram, flow chart, you know, try to organize our thinking. Yeah. So we need to solve these sub-problems and putting them together to get the whole problem solved. So we put in a diagram, usually to solve a relatively complicated problem. We need to do that. Yeah. So after that, we need to represent each small task in code. Implement in code. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So then, yeah. At the end, we get a computer program. Do testing, fixing the bugs. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. And to get a problem solved. Yeah, so that's a, from a programmer's point of view. Yeah. That's another angle we view a typical algorithm. Okay, all right. So then we look at a, a program, typical program. Yeah. We need to write a sequence of instructions. Okay. Yeah. They should be unambiguous, very clear, clearly written. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Then the input, the input should be legitimate, yeah. should be valid. Input data should be valid. Valid means following the business requirements. Yeah. So there is a step usually checking validity of the input we validate the, in the data. Validation step. Now we need to have valid data. Then we do processing. Yeah, so that's the input. Output, then when you produce output, you need to follow required format. Yeah. The output usually provide your customer some business solutions. Here, when we talk about real-world computing problems, we solve those computing problems for some users, right? Yeah, for some users, our customers, okay? So you need to use the required format for your customers, yeah, all right, yeah. Then execution time, now it's important. When you deliver your solution to your customers, Execution time is extremely important yeah. because your customers care about this item, yeah, big time. Yeah. Although it is finite amount, but that's not enough. Finite amount, that's the minimum requirement, right? Finite amount, minimum requirement. But you need, uh, need acceptable to your users acceptable to your users. Your users feel, oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I can take it. So this solution, the response time in this certain amount of time units, so I can take it. Yeah, so then your users will pay for your solution, right? Otherwise, too slow, okay? Too slow, your users won't pay won't pay for it. So, I cannot use it. Okay? It takes too long. I won't accept it. Okay? Yeah. So you can see from different angle, you need to consider many other factors. 
Okay? Yeah, also very important. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. So at this point, that's the overview of an algorithm. So we first we understand in a general overview before we get into the details. No. Yeah. All right. So any question at this point? Yeah. Okay. All right. Next. So if you have no question. If you have a question. You can stop me. Yeah. Ask me some questions. Yeah. Otherwise, I try to follow the plan. Right. Yeah. Today, although the first class, we probably a little slower than my original plan. Yeah, that's normal. Yeah. All right. Then the next topic, I want to show you a concrete example showing you strategies, executions. Yeah. We want to see it. Yeah. So I use the famous fake coin problems strategy for fake coin problems. Yeah. So I think most of you heard of that. It's a puzzle problem. Puzzle. Okay. Yeah. Before we learn any algorithm knowledge, the puzzle problem. Okay. All right. So the first fake coin problem from our textbook. Yeah. We know there are several versions of fake coin problem. Yeah. Here we take a relatively simple version fake coin problem. Fake coin problem with a lighter fake. The fake one is lighter than the normal coin. Assumption. Okay? Because there is another version much more difficult. The fake coin, we don't know lighter or heavier. We just know it has different weight from the normal. Different weight. And that's the only information we know. But here, we assume the fake one is lighter, and easier yeah, for us. All right. The question. No. You have n greater than two, at least more than two identical looking coins. Yeah. And a two pan balance scale with no weights. No weights. <laughs> if you have weights, then much more easier. No weights. All right, yeah. One of the coin is a fake, lighter than all the other coins. Yeah, the genuine coins, right. So here, the question, how to use the minimum number of weighings to find the fake coin? Yeah, that's the question. Minimum number of weighings to find the fake coin. Yeah, let me check a little bit. My recorder, yeah. Yeah, I hope it's all right. Yeah, still. Okay. Looks fine. Yeah. All right. All right. The puzzle problem. Yeah. Here, the reason I put this question at this point because we don't need the knowledge about algorithm, right? Yeah. Just use our real world knowledge, our common sense knowledge, we can solve it. Yeah, weighing, right? Pen, scale, balance, everybody knows how to do it. Yeah. So we don't need any special knowledge here, right? Yeah, but I use this as an example. We look at from strategy aspect, execution aspect, right? Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing give you first view First concrete view of algorithms. Yeah. All right, strategy, the first thing. Yeah. yeah. At this point, we can think about the strategy. Can you think about, yeah, first, in the first view, this problem may not be very easy to solve, right? Think about, at least you need to do some non-trivial work, right? Non-trivial, right? You cannot say it's trivial to solve, right? Non-trivial. You need to do some work. Yeah. <coughs> now, think about, we want some effective strategy in this situation. Based on your personal experience, what kind of strategy you want to apply here? 
in this puzzle problem. Yeah. I would start by weighing like a random subset of the coins. Okay. If they all have the same weight, then we know that they're the real coins because only one is lighter. Than right. The fake one. Right. Right. Yeah. Good. It gives me some idea. Right. Yeah. It give me some idea. Okay, I guess this only works if you have like an uh, even number of coins. Or, uh, I was just wondering, could you put more than one, like split half and half and see which one? Yeah, yeah. Any number, you can put any number of coins, two sides of the scale. Yeah. But definitely you want to put the same number, right? Otherwise, you don't get useful information. Think about it, right? Three here, two there. Can you get helpful information? You cannot. You have to put same number of coins at two sides. Yeah. All right. All right. But here, let me summarize. So what the suggestion from you, you basically you told me doing experiments, right? Doing experiments. Yeah. What kind of experiments? So you just play around, you know, try many times doing experiments. Right. That's typically for a typical problem solving for a human. How do we solve real world problems? Usually, when we do not have a lot of experience, we do experiments, right? Yeah, that's the typical way we solve real world problems. Play around. You know, try to get some useful information when we manipulate, right? Yeah, typically that, yeah. But, one thing, the negative side of that way, it takes, takes a while, right? No. You need to build up your experience. You need to build up your knowledge. When you play around, you, when you do the experiments, you build up your knowledge. Okay? Yeah. That takes time. Yeah. How about another way? Okay? How about another way? Yeah. Try, we try to save that time. We try to save that experiment time because very time consuming. Okay, how about someone teach you some knowledge already based on a lot of other experiments in the real world? Yeah. Give you some effective suggestion, effective suggestion, but that suggestion is based on many other real world experiments. And it, it is proved very effective. When you apply that, can you save some time? Yeah, so that, that's what we are going to do in this class. We want to learn many effective strategies based on the real world, a lot of experiments from the real world, other people, experiments. So we do not need to repeat those experiments to get those strategies. All right, so here, let me give you the first strategy yeah. that, should, that can save our some time, experiment time, all right, yeah. All right, experiments for the experience. Yeah. We want to save as much as we can this time, yeah. The first thing is try to solve the problem when n equals three. Is that easy? You only have three coins. Is that easy to solve? Same problem, but three coins, minimum number of coins. And greater than two, you cannot use two coin, right? The minimum is three, minimum number. This strategy looks nothing brilliant, right? At least you cannot say this strategy is a brilliant strategy, right? Too simple, right? Too simple. Can we call it strategy? It's so simple. Can we call it a strategy? Or, if you call it a strategy, anything can be a strategy, right? Any method can be a strategy. Yeah, we can call it a strategy. Is it effective? Because the most important question is, is that effective? Right? Yeah. So here, actually, it's a really effective strategy. Simple or not, that's not important. We just want some strategy effective. Okay? Simple or sophisticated, that's not an issue. So we 
one effective strategy. And this strategy is proved extremely effective in many of the real world situation. Solve the simplest case first. Always start from the simplest case. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Why it's important? First, it's like experiment, right? But when you do experiment, do you want to get a star started with a very simple case or very difficult case? Yeah. Here, why starting from the simplest case is important? We want experience. We want some relevant experience. Yeah. I was thinking if instead of n equals 3, if we had n equals 9, could we like split it into groups of three coins and then just compare the three groups? And yes. Turn it into the simple case. Great. That's the essence of this method. We divided all our coins into three piles, th three even piles. Or we say three even piles. Okay? Why three? Why not two? Why not four? Why three? Why three is the magic number? Can you imagine that? Here, three is the magic number. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you can because based on the device, the scale. Two pen scale, okay? Two pen scale. Basically, one weighing of a two pen scale can give us three different information pieces. Three different. Left pen information, right pen information, and off the pen information. How about that? Off the scale, right? So basically, we we can collect information from three different places. Left pan, right pan, off the scale. That's the reason we divide into three piles for three parts of the information sources. How about that? Okay, yeah, so three. Yeah, good, simplest case. All right, now let's do the work n equals 3. Do the work. Yeah. yeah. I think so everyone, you can do it. Yeah. But here, if you do it in your mind, it may not be easy, but let's do on paper. So yeah. We assume this is paper. We do on paper. Okay. All right. One, two, three, three coins. Yeah. Now we put it on a two pen scale. Yeah. Coin one, coin two put two sides of the scale, there are three different cases, right? Yeah, three different cases you need to study, okay? The middle one, even, okay? Yeah. Even, which one is the fake? Is coin one fake, coin two fake, or coin three fake? Coin three. Yeah, coin three. Yeah. How can coin one fake, right? If coin one, how about... Same way, coin two, right? So coin three is the fake. Okay? All right. Then, yeah, one way we know coin three is fake. Then for the first uh, uppercase, uppercase, yeah? That's the result. Then you can easily see coin one fake, right? The lighter one, yeah. Similarly, the last case, coin two fake. Yeah. One weighing one way yeah so yeah what yeah we can get all the information for n equals three all right yeah. here let me do the summary yeah. yeah because we near the break time when uh, let me do the summary for this method then we take a break all right. After you study this first special case, it's very easy. I believe everyone in this class can do it. Yeah. Suppose I assign you this problem, n equals 3. Use one way to tell me which one is the fake. I believe everyone can tell me how to do it. Right? Just do some experiments. 
then you will figure out immediately. Yeah. But the most important thing is, what do we learn from this simple example, right? Does it help? Does this simple example help us to solve when n equals 100? Does it help? So we, yeah, because our goal is for general n. Not for this special case. Yeah. You told me nine, right? Yeah, we can solve nine coin problems. Nine coin problems. Can you tell me how many ways you, you need weighing nine coins? So yeah, you split each coin into a group of three so you can find which group uh, has the lighter one and then it reduces down to three coins. Uh, could be the fake one, and then you do the process again, so you're sort of like repeating the process two times. Right, right, yeah. Two way, so you, you get, you can fix nine. Can you solve 27 coin problem? Right? 27, can you tell me how many weighings? You divide it into um, 27, yeah. Sets of nine. Right. And then do the same process. Right, one, two, three, right? Yeah, yeah. So you, you get the rules, right? You get rules. So here you know the purpose. Why we do experiments for the simplest case. Because we can get a lot of helpful information from that simple case. Yeah? Because after you work it out, we as a human, we find some general rule behind it. That's the reason simple case is useful. Yeah, simple case because we can see something unseen before, right? We can see something if we do not do this experiment, we never know, right? If we do not solve it, the simplest case, we never know, right? Yeah, so here you can see the power. We can call effective, right? The strategy effective. Later you will see many other, some difficult many difficult problems. If we do it in this way, much easier. Much easier. Okay, that's why this is an effective strategy. Okay, yeah, yeah. Many times people tend to feel if some strategy is extremely simple, some kindergarten kid can do it, then we feel it's a bad one. Because if a kindergarten kid can do it, why it is a good strategy, right? People tend to feel about that, right? But it's not, okay? It's not, yeah. Our standard, it's not a kindergarten kid or not. Our standard is if it is effective or not, okay? Yeah. If it's effective or not, that's our standard, yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah, so I think it's a break time. So come back at 2.30. Yeah.